So Jonathan Turley's here on this. Sir, good morning to you. This is Jim Griffin, the one of the attorneys, during this press conference yesterday, saying that we would have never put him on the stand had we known any of this. That's the claim he makes. Watch. There's been a lot of said, talked about whether Alex should have taken the stand. I can assure you, I can assure you, when we considered what factors and what we should and should not do and considered whether he should take the stand, we never considered the likelihood, as reported to us by the jurors, that the clerk of court would go in to the sanctity of the jury room before he testified and tell the jurors, don't be fooled by his testimony, watch out for his body language. I don't know if this is revision or not, Professor, because as, as I recall, <laughs> Murdaugh was the one who wanted to take the stand. Remember, he was the best attorney in the entire state of South Carolina. Yeah, this was really a Hail Mary play. Most uh, defense attorneys don't want their clients to take the stand. In a case like this, the risks are simply too high. If your client stumbles on the stand, he's unlikely to get up uh, because the prosecutors are right there to jump on him. Uh, so I think this was a, a calculation that the evidence was so strong against him, it would take that personal connection uh, to get someone on the jury to say, I'm not convinced. But I have to say, Bill, uh, you know, I, I've been watching trials a long time. I'm, I, I was basically a criminal defense attorney in, tra uh, in, in, in past years. Um, I haven't seen evidence like this in many cases. This is a, in terms of the jury tampering allegations, this is pretty serious. I mean, the juries are really kept in this highly protected cocoon in the court. Uh, the, what is being alleged here by Hill goes well beyond the pale. I, I think that the court has no choice but to take this very seriously and to hold a hearing. Jonathan, why would, they be, why would we be learning about this now? It is. Well, a lot of this, uh, ironically, is because jury proceedings are secret. You don't normally hear uh, from the jury. You're allowed to poll the jury. You're allowed to speak to jurors after the trial. Most elect not to do that, particularly with the defense if they voted to convict. Uh, I think that the catalyst was indeed the book that seemed to have uh, had this sort of shaking of the tree uh, effect, and the defense went after it as they had to. Uh, but you know, these are affidavits that have been, that have been submitted by the defense. Those are made uh, by people under under penalty of perjury. Uh, the book itself raises serious questions. The court can't take a blind eye to this. No matter how strong the evidence is against the defendant, he's still entitled to a fair trial, and that includes a jury that is not subject to influence by court staff on, on these types of issues. Well, so maybe this has legs after all. We'll see how it goes there in South Carolina. Quickly on another topic, yesterday James Comer sent out a number of subpoenas uh, for Secretary Mayorkas alleging that the Secret Service tipped off Hunter Biden to a potential interview on December 8th of 2020. Eventually the interview did not happen. December 8th of 2020, several weeks after the election. Uh, what's Comer going for here? What evidence do you believe he has that can help him make his case? Well, I think Comer has no choice but to pursue this evidence. You know, Democratic members opposed uh, the investigation in its entirety and said this is just the way all criminal cases are handled. That's what Representative Goldman said. Well, these seasoned IRS whistleblowers said, no, it's not. And a FBI agent said that it had not happened to him before. They were told to stay a block away from the House, and they were eventually waved off. That's pretty serious when you're talking about the president's son. Moreover, you know, the, the Secret Service can clearly, and the Homeland Security can clearly discuss this issue. We're talking about a past effort to interview someone who now knows, obviously, that he was and continues to be a target. They can answer these questions. So this is going to end up with a confrontation between Congress and uh, the administration. The question is why the administration is doing this. It's like a game of chicken, and they want to see if Congress Congress jumps out first. Well, Congress can change the game. They could start an impeachment inquiry. And they could say, look, we want these answers. And either you're going to give them to us or we'll get a court to tell you to give them to us. 
Well, and it might come to that by the end of the month, of course, because all of these things, the government shutdown, impeachment inquiries, demands for it um, from Kevin McCarthy's point of view. That's, you know, he's getting squeezed, so we might see a little bit more of that. Jonathan right. Turley, it's great to see you this Thank morning. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.